Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a This Year in Perfume and it's going to focus on the year 2017. And it's a big year for me. Uh, it was actually the year that I got married. Uh, it was a fantastic year. And it was a pretty good year in perfumery too. I'm looking around, you know, every year as we get closer and closer to the present, I always think, my God, what are these things going to look like? Like, I'm always worried I'm going to have like one fragrance. As it turns out, thanks to many of you, I have a lot of samples from this year that I want to talk about with you guys. Uh, and I do have some amazing full bottles. There's some of my favorite perfumes in there. Sometimes when you, you know, think about your favorites, it's hard to categorize by year because... You know, I always look back to the 80s and, you know, what I consider to be the golden era of perfumery. Um, but looking at some of these, even from the year 2017, as we go through this, you'll you'll see, I love wearing some of these fragrances, especially the ones that I have full bottles of. Uh, I've done some early impressions on a couple of these uh, samples, and I have a many early impressions to go still. So I have a lot of content that I want to do for you guys. But let's talk about the year 2017. So first, let's do Scent of the Day. Uh, as is customary on Channel Ramsey. Scent of the Day. Let me respray this thing. I, um, I have to tell you guys, I don't like this fragrance. Um, I did not enjoy wearing this today. It actually kind of put me in a foul mood. Um... But I force myself to wear these fragrances because I want to experience how it wears throughout the entire day, okay? So this is a Luban fragrance. Definitely will not be getting a bottle of this. Uh, yeah, I still have a pretty decent amount in my decant. Um, this is called Corrigan. So Corrigan came out a decade ago in 2012, and the perfumer is Thomas Fontaine. And the notes are cognac, saffron, juniper berry. Very strange opening, even from the beginning. Cognac and saffron are usually associated with rich and heavy and dense and thick fragrances. That's how I like my liqueur fragrances anyways. Think Overture Man by Amouage. Think um, Roja's Creation E or Enigma, Pour Homme, uh, Parfum, depending on what part of the world that you're in. And this opening... Is very strange. It almost seems like a weird version of Guerlain's Oud Cole, which I reviewed um, a couple weeks back, and I did not like that perfume at all, and I don't like this one either. Uh, so it's this strange, because Juniper adds this freshness to it. So you get this strange freshness where it doesn't seem it should be there. I almost feel like it was if it was deeper and darker and heavier, I would appreciate it more. At least it kind of comes out. At least it would come out and say, hey, this is what I am. And this is what I stand for. And if you don't like it, screw you. Instead, it kind of walks the line. It's like I'm trying to be a sweet, gourmand, spicy fragrance with ambrette and whiskey and cognac and leather and oud and all these heavy notes. But then there's this uh, tentativeness about the fragrance in the opening. And it doesn't seem very well blended either. Uh, I don't like this fragrance at all. I think it's... Um, Gourmands are a tough sell for me anyway, but I just did not enjoy it. I didn't think it transitioned well. I didn't like any of it, but uh, I will do a review before I use up the rest of this decant on Luban Corrigan. Okay, so let's talk about the year 2017. So let's talk about first a couple of imaginary authors' fragrances. I've done a couple reviews on the House of Imaginary Authors. I created its own little... Uh, list. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create the own, everyone's own uh, playlist. So every house will have its own playlist. So there'll be Imaginary Authors, Guerlain, Prada, Tom Ford, on and on and on. You can just kind of pull the videos up that way if you'd prefer. And there's two from 2017 that I have that I want to do videos on. One is called Saint Julep. How about that writing? Uh, that It's almost like I'm colorblind and I can't say anything. Saint Julep. Um which is a sweet green fragrance with mint, tangerine, southern magnolia, mm, bourbon whiskey, uh, grisalva, sugar, sugar, and ice accord. Um, so I don't know how I feel about the notes on that one, but I will give it a fair shake. 
and uh, usually I'm okay with his creations. I'm very rarely blown away, but I think Josh Meyer does perfume, and he doesn't try to rip people off. He does like $95 for 50 ml, very fair pricing. Uh, and then another early impression. I think I'm a little bit more excited about this one. I only have a little bit enough to do a quick a quick hit video one night, and this is called O oh Unknown. Okay, so O oh Unknown is uh, supposedly this woody, powdery scent. I haven't had a chance to smell it yet. Uh, with some interesting notes of tea. So it's tea and orris butter, specifically black tea and Lapsang Souchong tea with orris butter, Kyoto moss, musk, and sandalwood. I can't say I know uh, exactly what this Kyoto moss uh, is compared to regular moss. But uh, it's the only fragrance in the entire fragrance universe in Parfumo that lists Kyoto moss. So it must be a very specific type of, of moss. Um, probably, some, probably from the Kyoto tree or something that I just am not aware of. But uh, yes, that one seems much more interesting. Uh, I do like tea-based fragrances when they're done well. So that's one I'm looking forward to. And then I actually had two of these. Um... Let me get a sip of water. It was like a hair or something on my mouth. Oh, we have cats and hair just gets everywhere. Uh, and one of them has super long hair. And so we always have to stay on top of it or else you'll just, you know, you'll see little, um, you will see uh, little, um, you know, like balls of Felix hair, like tumbleweeds just strolling by. Uh, anyways, cats. Um, so this is called Antique Oak. And interestingly enough, Antique Oak was done by uh, Francis Kirkjohn, believe it or not. He did another one of these, and it was an amber scent. Uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was something amber. And these are actually very expensive. Uh, so these are not cheap fragrances. And um, Burberry marketed them in like a high-end line. They were supposed to be only purchased at the Burberry exclusive. You couldn't uh, shop. You couldn't get them anywhere else. They were very exclusive to the Burberry shop. And I don't think they did very well. And I completely understand why. Very few perfume connoisseurs are willing to give Burberry $400 or whatever they were asking for these. The amber one broke. Uh, these were a gift from Moudesir when I made a purchase with him. So I literally broke the amber one. So I got to smell it when it broke, but I didn't get to wear it and experience it. And it was nice. I can tell you just the smell in the air after it broke was nice. But um, not one that I would give Francis Kirk John or Burberry $400 for, whatever they're asking for these. I think they're also discontinued. This is, an, this is another nice uh, Francis Kirk John creation. As usual, it's simplistic. It's oud, leather, saffron, and papyrus. And... You know, it has that plasticky Francis Kirkjohn DNA, which some people really despise, and sometimes I really despise it, and sometimes when it's done uh, in a fashion where I can understand, you know, what he's trying to do and the story he's trying to tell, and it doesn't, and it doesn't just smell like the top of a doll's head or something, you know, there actually is a... Uh, you know, there's an undercurrent of story and notes and I can perceive what's going on and it's not just white musks and plastics. Um, I tend to like his fragrances, but many a times it is just the boring white musks and plasticky, very um, synthetic smelling creations is what he makes. And some people love that. And like I said, I'm on the fence. There's a couple that I can stomach and I can stand. I think his regular oud, not the X-ray, but just the eau de parfum is very good. And um, he's got a couple for the winter, you know, that I really plan on on wearing ambery fragrances that work well in the winter. Seal de Gum is one of them. I really like that. I wish I had a full bottle of Seal de Gum, but it's impossible to find. Uh, and so sometimes when he does it right, he does it right. This seems like it falls into the he did it right category, this antique oak. Um, the oud in here, of course, has that designer oud vibe. It doesn't smell like Burberry is out there, you know, competing with Russian Adam to secure oud for their newest exclusive fragrance. Um, sarcasm, of course. 
for those of you who uh, lack the sarcasm filter. But I still do like it. There's something about it. Um, and it has that, you know, Francis Kirk John, when he really uses some of these synthetic molecules that last forever and ever. Like, I sprayed his oud one day on my hand right here, and some of the particles must have floated down onto my workbook, and I could smell it on that workbook for months. Literally months I could smell it. Um, and this, I think, has some of those particles that just last forever. So, Antique Oak is one that I'll be interested. I only have enough to do like a late night quick hit video, you know, wear it once or twice at night and talk about it. But that's one that I am looking forward to talking about because no one talks about that Burberry exclusive line. I, most people don't even know Burberry has an exclusive line. The only reason I know is because of Mood to Seer. Uh, okay, next is a fragrance that was sent to me by D.L. Quelia, and it's a Rosendu Matu, who is a fantastic perfumer. Unfortunately, he passed away recently. I did a tribute video to him. You can go check it out under my perfumers portfolio videos. But this is called uh, number five, and it's called Floral Amber Sensual Musk. That's how it's listed. And this fragrance is um, hyped heavily in the community, okay? Uh, many people uh, have hyped this fragrance and many people hate this fragrance. So I have enough where I very well may do a full wear and do just a, uh, you know, make it my scent of the day and let you guys know what I think. Um, I can tell you it is sweet. It is definitely sweet. There's no doubt about it. The vanilla in this is extremely sweet and I can see why it has taken off. Uh, but I'm going to reserve my judgments until I've given it a full wear. Because it does have this carnation accord, which I love in perfume. And so it's got this spicy carnation that mixes with the lily in the valley uh, and the vanilla and amber and musk. And uh, so I'll, I'll be very interested to see how that wears on a full wear. I want to reserve judgment. I want to be fair to it. Uh, it would be very easy for me to go, oh, it's so disgustingly sweet. Get it away. But I want to kind of, I want to be fair to it. Uh, especially since I've, that's the first fragrance from the house I will smell. He created his own house, I think, five, six years ago, whatever it was. And so when you smell a fragrance from a house for the very first time, it's not just about the fragrance. It's also an introduction to the house, in my opinion. And so, um, I want to really take my time with that one and be fair. Okay. Next is a fragrance from another house I've never smelled before or done a video before. And this is thanks to the gentleman that I purchased this Scandal Pourol and this Roja, uh, Roger, Roger Bird um, from. And it's a Gallagher fragrance. He kind of refilled these little atomizers with different juice for me and put a sticker on it. But this is a Gallagher fragrance and it's called Amongst Waves. So 2017 release, of course, or it wouldn't be on the video. Uh, and Amongst Waves is this fruity aquatic. Um, very strange fragrance. It has honeydew melon, which I swear I just talked about a fragrance that had like a melon note in it yesterday. It was cantaloupe or something. Weird notes in perfumery. I don't know how I feel about melon or cantaloupe or honeydew in my perfume, but I will give it a shot. Uh, it's got ginger, green apple, lime zest, orange, pomegranate, aquatic notes, uh, iris, sea salt, tulip, patchouli, and vanilla. So we'll see what this Gallagher uh, brand is all about. I'm not familiar with them at all. Apparently, Daniel Gallagher is the perfumer uh, and obviously brand owner. Uh, and then there's a, a Wilhelm perfume, uh, perfumery, Wilhelm perfumery, another brand that I've never talked about on the channel. Honestly, I have no desire to really talk about them, but I do have this decant. So I do want to at least talk about it, but I don't think it's going to be a positive discussion. Uh, this might be the kryptonite of Rich Mitch. He hates white florals. This is the queen of white florals to me. Even though it's in a yellow atomizer, uh, their whole branding is like yellow, yellow cap, yellow sticker, uh, short stubby bottles. Uh, but this thing from Wilhelm Perfumery, don't tell Jasmine. Eau de Parfum from 2017. It says floral and green. My God, I sprayed this once. And 
I thought I was going to have to wash it off. I mean, it is so jasmine. It's like spraying just a, a jasmine flower on your hand. You spray it and a jasmine flower crawls out of the atomizer and just sticks to your hand. And, um, and not the awesome jasmine grandiflorum or jasmine sambac, not the real stuff I smelled from Russian Adam, but the synthetic jasmine that you smell in many uh, designers. It... I did not like that at all. Um, but if Jasmine's your thing, don't tell Jasmine could be the greatest fragrance you've ever smelled. For me, it's, you know, it's it's white floral death. Okay, next is a, this is one I'm interested in, very interested in looking forward to. I'll probably do a full wear. I'll probably wear this as my scent of the day and uh, talk about it on the channel. It's from the House of Histoires de Parfum, a niche house I actually really respect. They don't get enough credit for what they do, and I think they really do care about the art of perfumery. This is created by Luca Maffei, uh, and this is called On Aparte Irreverent. So you can see irreverent right there. Uh, again, another line that no one really talks about very much, but I'm excited about this one because this has some elements that I really like. Um, it's got Elemi, which Elemi has this... Um, this lemony, pine-like frankincense vibe, if you will, uh, but maybe a little bit fresher. And it has lavender, uh, and it has coffee, which I love coffee perfumes when they're done well. It has oud, and I think Histoire de Parfum does oud really well. I really like, uh, they did a fragrance that um, uh, was called Rare Fidelis, and there's a beautiful oud and coffee accord there. So I'm hoping that this is just as good. Um, I'm not expecting it to be just as good as Rare Fidelis, but I'm hoping it is because it has that oud coffee and it has Styrax, which I love. Styrax has this waxy like vanilla, you know, wispy vanilla, waxy vanilla vibe with patchouli, sandalwood, and amber. And so the only thing about this fragrance that worries me is it could be sweet. Uh, because of that amber and styrax, but we will give it a shot. And then from 2017, here's one I already have a video on. You can go check out my Aris Ladori um, playlist, and this is on there. And this is my probably one of the least favorite Aris Ladori fragrances I've ever smelled. I respect it, okay, um, but I I wouldn't I don't want a full bottle of this if I if you said Ramsey pick a full bottle of Aris Ladori that you don't have, it would probably be the original Ottoman Empire or Antiquity or something like that. But this is the one I, I struggled with. I have enough to maybe spray it one day and just experience it one more time. It's called Oud Picante. And Oud Picante is a challenging, challenging scent. It's spicy, um, it's resinous, and it opens up smelling like uh, you took every single spice in the world and combined it. Cumin, cardamom, clove, nutmeg. Uh, there's this animalic oud. Um, there's this turmeric-like vibe. This, you know, spice bazaar, heavy turmeric with coffee and sandalwood and costas and uh, muhuhu wood and labdanum and all this stuff. All this, you know, it dries much better than it starts, I will say that. And also, the other thing that I want to say is it came out in 2017, and I think this fragrance was a little bit of an influencing fragrance uh, for other indie brands, because when I smelled Ensar Oud's EO2 from 2018, it reminded me a lot of this. <laughs> Excuse me. And when I smelled, there's a Prin Lomros uh, creation, that I did a video on. If you go, I think it's the only Prin Lomros on the channel. I can't remember exactly what it was called. It was a long ass name. Uh, and it smelled very similar to Oud Picante in the opening. It had that um, extremely spice overdose that was too much for me. Uh, but I can respect it because, and if you go watch my video, I basically say this. I say that you know, at first I was really put off, but then I had to take a step back and be object objective about it and say, you know what? They're challenging the status quo. They're doing something different. I should like this. And even though I don't, I have to give it credit for being unique and, uh, you know, being original and all that stuff. So Oud Picante, 
there's a, a video on my channel, you can check that out. And then, one fragrance I'm interested in talking about more on the channel, actually one brand I need to talk more about. I did a couple videos early on, and then these have just kind of sat by the wayside while I've talked about other things. I need to get back to this. This is more of a summery scent for me, though. I wouldn't wear this in the winter. Um, but for the warmer weather, this is absolutely stunning. It's from the brand of Les Demodables, and it's called Iris Pearl. Now, Iris Pearl is a beautiful floral powdery iris. That's the thing that might be a little bit tough. And I love iris. Iris is one of my favorite notes. Uh, this has this beautiful French iris with Egyptian violet leaf, Moroccan mimosa absolute, uh, a sea breeze accord, and there is a very freshness. There's a fresh powderiness to this fragrance. Uh, clary sage, jasmine, uh, Ericulatum Absolute, uh, Madagascan Ylang Ylang. So very specific notes in Lesson Demo Dabla's always. They're very targeted notes, very specific. And uh, this is a very good iris fragrance. I would say that if you uh, believe in the masculine, feminine, you know, spectrum of perfumes, I think this probably will lean feminine, traditionally feminine to your nose. Um, but perfumes don't have a gender. I mean, there's no, uh, masculine or feminine gender to a fragrance. Anyone can wear anything, anytime. Uh, and this is completely unisex, but I think if you're, you know, someone who only wears like traditional masculine scents, you may think this is a little bit feminine, but if you're an iris lover like me, it's well worth checking out. It's called Iris Pearl. Okay. Next, next we're going to go to another brand which I have not talked about on the channel yet, but you will hear about them very soon. It's the brand of Juice Box Perfumes, Juice Box, and they basically base their, um, they base their perfumes based off of famous, um, artists, famous, uh, musicians from the past. I, I don't remember which one Live and Loud was. This one's called Live and Loud. Live and, Live and Loud, sorry, Live and Loud. There you go. Uh, I don't remember which one Live and Loud is based on. I'm sure someone will leave it in the comments, but it's uh, a Dominique Ropion, and I do like Dominique Ropion's work. Bergamot, cardamom, cinnamon, geranium, rose, oud, myrrh, amber, patchouli, sandalwood, cystus, absolute, and musk. So I'm very excited to talk about this one, but the one I'm really excited about is this. This one's called Black Powder, and this one's based on uh, Kurt Cobain from Nir Nirvana. Uh, look at the back. So these are supposed to look like little vinyl records or whatever they are. Um, and so, so yes, Black Powder was based on uh, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana, and it's black currant, apple, pimento, suede, tobacco leaf, frankincense, sandalwood, tonka, and patchouli. Suede. Tobacco leaf, frankincense. I'm I'm there. I'm all about that. Um, and this is created by Julien Rascanet, another of my favorite perfumers. So um, excited about the, to talk about these two on the channel very soon. And then we've got one that I actually did a video on recently, and it's from the house of Francesca Bianchi. And this this particular fragrance is called Under My Skin. Under My Skin. Okay, so Under My Skin um, is a spicy, animalic, ambery, leathery, it really does have this skin-like vibe to it. And uh, you can go check out my uh, review of it, or my early impression of it. I liked it. I really did. I think it's my favorite Francesca Bianchi fragrance that I've smelled so far. I just don't think I can justify a full bottle when I already own Bella Versailles. Uh, and I think Bala Versailles and even Salome by Papillon are probably superior. I think this is probably like one step below. And so for me, I enjoyed checking it out. I enjoy putting it in the old memory bank, but I don't think I would get a bottle. But uh, go check out my review of Under My Skin. And then another new brand that I haven't talked about on the channel yet, which I plan on very soon. There's just so many brands. I mean, literally, you, it's impossible to keep up. Um, and it's from the house of Hiram Green is the brand. 
And the one we're going to talk about today is actually the one, and look, it says, handcrafted, entirely natural. How about that? Uh, I, don't, I didn't realize they were an, an entirely natural brand. Um, and you can see the batch number there that says uh, created in 2020. I like how they hand wrote that, um, or it looks like they did anyways. And it says this one's called Slow Dive. So Slow Dive is when the Indian summer air is almost palpable. So this is Neroli Orange Blossom. Tobacco flour, honey beeswax, dried fruits, tuberose, and resins. Normally, tuberose is a very challenging note for me, but I've heard many people who I trust uh, say that tuberose or uh, slow dive is um, one of the best honey fragrances they've ever smelled. And you guys know me, I am a honey lover. So I'm very, very excited about giving that a whirl and seeing what. Uh, seeing what slow dive is all about okay next on the list to discuss soon is a ducita again all of these are 2017 releases obviously and this is called lesiage blanc and lesiage blanc uh says there's the little drawing you get with your ducita sample what it's supposed to be like um and it says, light fell on us, a discreet light, making its paved way through the chill and dusty air as I was reading your love. Um, I think her father does poetry or something. I think those are all his poems. But uh, Les Cillages Blanc is a green chiffre, orange blossom, neroli, tobacco, artemisia, galbanum, leather, ambrette, patchouli, and oak moss. I think I'll like this one. Just smelling it from the atomizer. Um, but with this kind of fragrance, I mean, so many of the times I smell stuff like this, I would just rather wear number 19, EDT, which is my favorite green chiffre, or, you know, Bandi or something like that. I mean, there's so many beautiful chiffres that I own and love. And um, so th these are tough full bottle sales, but I want to wear it and talk about it on the channel. It says the opening a rich bittersweet orange blossom and neroli combo, a calming quintessential living in the moment fragrance, gently warmed by a sweet, almost mystical essence of ylang ylang. At the heart, the original once definitive masculine accord of English leather balanced by a subtle floral touch of artemisia and a hint of intense green freshness from Persian galbanum. Persian galbanum. That sounds like the Iranian galbanum that, um, was so popular in the early bottles of number 19 from the 1970s. Very interesting. Um, excited to give that a sniff. And then there's another Ducita from 2017 I want to talk about, and it's called Le Doucher de Siam. And uh, this is supposed to be a floral spicy fragrance. There's your drawing by uh, Ducita. And uh, this one says, the opening, a heart-stopping blend of three fabulous flowers, rich rose de mai, fabulous frangipani, and creamy champaka. Uh, this one sounds like it won't be up my alley as much, but I'll always give everything a try. I can tell it's a little bit sweet from the vanilla, just from the atomizer. Um, but I'll be interested to give that a shot. This is uh, compared to a rosia fragrance I've actually never smelled called Nuwa. And uh, Nua was, uh, I think it, the new Nua from 2015 is still available. There was a Nua Roja put out from 2013 that got discontinued. And some people say that was like, um, you know, the better fragrance of the two. Of course, they discontinued it. But um, I've never smelled either, so I can't speak to it. But there is a Roja that I recently did a video on. Actually, I did a top Roja countdown. You can go check out. But... Uh, I did a video on this particular fragrance, and it came out in 2017, uh, and it's called 51 Porom. Roja's 51 Porom Parfum. Uh, and this is um, reminiscent, believe it or not, uh, I said this is reminiscent of a couple things. Portrait of a Lady and the Dowler Exquise by the brand Les Substrates, Eugene's brand. 
And I'm so excited to see what else him and Antoine Lee created because I absolutely love uh, La Dalle Exquise. I think it's one of my favorite rose fragrances at the moment. Maybe my favorite rose because it has that contrast with the castorium. This also has a little animalic touch, but um, very tough sell. You can go check out my video if you want the full breakdown. Tough sell when you can get Eugene's fragrance for such a better value for money. And then the final Roja on this list from 2017 is Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So I've talked about this one uh, just recently on the Roja Countdown. I forgot where this was ranked. I think it was somewhere in the middle. Uh, it was respectable, but not my favorite. It's basically this oriental fruity uh, chifre is what it feels like with... Um, Lots of fruits, a ton of fruits, apple, black currant, strawberry, raspberry, plum, banana. I mean, if there's a fruit, it's in here. And um, I'm not sure what that has to do with Saudi Arabia, but it is a, a beautiful fragrance in the heat. This is like a warm weather wear for me normally. So Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, that's one I'll do a full review on very soon. Okay, next we're going to go to the brand of Mansara. And this is a... Uh, hyped fragrance in the community because it's such a beast mode scent. I only have a decant, but a respectable size decant. This is called Red Tobacco. So Red Tobacco feels uh, so loud, so big and so loud. I mean, if you like your fragrances beast mode, if you like your fragrances to last like two days, this is the fragrance for you. Uh, the only thing about this fragrance is it's very um, rough, coarse, grimy and it almost feels unfinished to me like it feels like there's holes in this perfume so it's saffron huge saffron and uh oud with frankincense tobacco obviously red tobacco tobacco and the sweet vanillic musk and the sweetness will come out a little bit um it's spicy it's sweet you get that tobacco i i don't hate this fragrance I definitely wouldn't buy a full bottle, but um, it's uh, I'll do a, I'll do a review. I'll do a video on on red tobacco one day. But it is scratchy and loud. If you're uh, allergic to those amber extreme am woody amber type molecules, stay stay away from Mansara, the brand. Just period. Just don't buy a Mansara. Don't buy a Montal. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. It was a long day today, man. Today was a long day at work. Um, okay, next we're going to go to, actually before we do the full bottle, there's one more sample, another one I'm very excited to do a video on. This I will make my scent of the day and talk about this one day very soon. Uh, it's from the House of Papillon, one of my favorite niche houses. I think one of the best values for money. Everything that Liz Moores does is amazing. You can go check out my interview with her. If you haven't seen it yet, it's called Dryad. And this is a green chifra. And this might put, uh, this might give Le Siage Blanc a run for its money. I wonder which one I'll like more, Dryad or Le Siage Blanc. They're both green chifras. This made my Narcissus video from yesterday too, because there's Narcissus and Jonquil, which is um, a certain type of Narcissus. Apparently, there's like 50 different types of daffodils. Who would have known? Uh, who would have thunk it? But uh, there's all kind of things in here that I love. There's tarragon, star anise, castorium, civet, styrax, peru balsam, tobacco, labdanum. All, it's like uh, many of my favorite ingredients are in here. Iris, uh, galbanum, it's a green chifra. So I'm very excited to see what uh, Dryad brings to the table. I'm sure I'm going to love it because it's a... Uh, it's a Liz Moore's creation. I love her work. Uh, and, all right, let's do some of the full bottles. And you'll see I don't have as many full bottles because we're getting closer and closer to real time. You guys will probably be even shocked I have this one. I'm shocked I have a bottle of this. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. I can't stand this scent. It, it would definitely be on my fragrances I hate list. But uh, it's called Boss the Scent Intense for him. Uh, and this is this is shite. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. It's uh, sweet, uh, woody, vanilla, stuff that I don't think men should smell like nowadays. 
I mean, to go from boss number one to this, I mean, what a fall from grace. It's just, this did the stupid dive bomb, you know. Uh, ginger green cardamom with maninka fruit. The maninka fruit was the selling point, actually, for me. That's what made me buy it, because I said, what the hell is maninka fruit, and what does it smell like? And while I see all these other reviews who say, oh, the maninka fruit's so good, I just get this sweet vanillic thing. Uh, and I don't like it at all. Um, but I bought it and I don't sell my fragrances, so I will keep it and do a video on it one day. Uh, next, we're going to do the House of Bagwe. And um, I'm 99% sure that it's pronounced Bagwe, not Bogue. But uh, if you know for sure, do correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Bagwe. And it's called Mem. Okay, Mem is a challenging fragrance for me. It's animalic, it's floral. It's got all kind of florals. Jasmine, Grandiflorum, Lily of the Valley, Lang, Damask Rose, Bourbon, Geranium. Uh, it's got some woods, Himalayan Cedar, Indian Sandalwood. It's got this strange Civet Castorium, but the Civet and Castorium seem to like come from the florals, if that makes sense. They don't smell like Civet and Castorium. They smell like you're smelling uh, florals that are um that use civet and castorium fragrance if that makes sense it literally seems like it's coming from the florals very strange fragrance uh very challenging uh lots of lavender and uh i i need to i need to wear that more Th this perfumer antonio gardoni he really challenges me i'd love to try his other fragrances he created like t-rex specifically i'd love to try t-rex um, I know that's supposed to be a huge fragrance. Uh, I'd love to try some of his other work, but it, it's a challenging. His, his, his style is just very challenging to me. Okay, so we're going to do a couple liqueur fragrances back to back. One is from the House of Strangers, and this is the only full bottle of a Prin Lom Ross creation that I own. And this is called Cigar Rum. Now, they recently put out Cigar Rum Intense just a year ago or something like that this year. Um, but this is Raisins, Prunes, so I like the um, originality. Dried Cherry with Rum, Amber, Tobacco, oak wood, Vetiver, Resins, Labdanum, and the strange note of Kelp. So, I think I prefer Nishane's Fan Your Flames to this. It's just, a, I enjoy wearing that more. This is a little bit more artistic. You get this pruney, raisiny thing with the kelp. I mean, it really does feel like you're kind of chilling on a beach somewhere um, with your rum and tobacco, and I like it. I mean, I would I buy this again? No, probably not, but um, I'm glad since I do have it, I'm going to do a video on it, talk about it, and uh, it's probably about the right time to wear it in fall, so I'll talk about this one very soon. Uh, next is one that if Stranger's uh, Cigar Rum is a like, okay, this is a pure out and out love. And this was sent to me by uh, one of my subscribers, and you know who you are. Thank you very much. I think he wanted to remain anonymous, but I bought something uh, that he gave me a very fair price on. And he said, hey, I'm going to throw this in for free because I think you'll like it. And it's not my style. I said, yeah, bring it on. And it was from the House of Beaufort, London, and it's called Iron Duke. And what a fragrance it is, and what a nail on the head that guy hit. This is an insane fragrance. It reminds me of Amouage from the old days, you know. Amouage 10 years ago when Christopher Chong was at the height of his power, and... Um, Christopher Chong has a new gig, by the way. He's going to be the creative director for the house They Mean. Or th I can't remember. Something like that. I've never smelled any of their fragrances before, but I've heard of them. Uh, but anything Christopher Chong does, I want to smell. Uh, but there, people are already comparing this to the new Amouage. Amouage is Royal Tobacco. And I can tell you, I like this better than Royal Tobacco. Uh, and, you know, this wears... Very challenging, probably, for most people. Oh, God. It reminds me of being in, like, a World War II tank. I don't know why my brain goes to World War II, uh, but I get this World War II tank, metallic, liqueur, 
leathery, animalic, this burning sensation in the background, almost like, you know, your side of the war won the battle, but you burn the hell out of the other side's land, and the smoke is being, you know, pulled your way, and on that smoke, you're smelling everything. You know, you're smelling uh, the burned trees and the grass and whatever else was burned, uh, and you're smelling, uh, you know, metal on fire, and you're smelling leather, but also there's a soap note in here. So think about this crazy view I'm setting up for you. So there's a soap note. So imagine, you know, you've got some, uh, you've got some germ freak in the tank who's freaking out because his hands are dirty and he's washing his hands because, and then you guys are in the middle of the battle and your commanding officer is right behind you in the tank chugging a, uh, you know, a thing of brandy or something because he thinks he's gonna die. In yelling orders at you, there's gunpowder in the air, there's hay, there's dry hay on the ground, there's burning hair, hay in the air, maybe burning hair too. Uh, there's bourbon whiskey, whiskey, not not uh, brandy, whiskey is what he's chugging. Just absolutely insane, and I can appreciate it. I can really appreciate a crazy story like that, uh, and I really want to dive into the house of Beaufort. That's a house that I think will suit my fascination of, you know, the old amouages that used to take chances and do interesting things. I think Beaufort is kind of still that house. Okay, next is a Prada from the year 2017, of course, or wouldn't be on the list. Um, and rumor for a while was this is discontinued, but I don't think it is. I think it's still available. And it's called Prada Loam Intense from 2017. Sorry about the fingerprints. Uh, Prada Loam Intense. And Prada Loam Intense is this irisy take on a, a soapy fragrance, okay? So imagine you take that Dior Homme DNA and to make it intense, they basically amped up the patchouli. So the patchouli is a little bit heavier here. Uh, there's this ambery tonka bean, little bit of sweetness, but not, not too much. This is still very wearable. Uh, beautiful for the office. Any Prada fragrance is beautiful for the office because it gives a soapy, clean-like vibe. Uh, instead, I was wearing this Corrigan today. It probably smelled like uh, I just took a shot of whiskey or something. But I don't like it. I just do not appreciate it at all. Um... Now, here's a fragrance I do appreciate and I can't wait to wear. Maybe I'll wear this tomorrow to make up for this crazy uh, Luban Corrigan I forced myself to wear today. This is uh, Gucci Guilty Absolute, one of my favorite designers of all time. Uh, discontinued, unfortunately. There's a couple fragrances that are supposedly in this ballpark, one of which I know for sure because I own it, is Opus 11 from Amouage. Um, Opus 11 and Gucci Guilty Absolute are very, very close. There are some differences. There's no Cypress in uh, Opus 11. So there's some Cypress here and um, there is some Vetiver where Opus 11 is all about the Marjoram, Oud, Styrax and this wood leather note that uh, I forget who owns it. Who owns wood leather? Uh... I can't tell. It's it's probably like a Givaudan material or, you know, Robert Tet or something like that. But uh, it's in this and it's in Gucci Guilty Absolute. Those are the only two. Sorry, it's in Gucci Guilty Absolute and it's in uh, Opus 11. Those are the only two fragrances in my collection that have this note according to Parfumo. Um, so yes, but I love this. I absolutely love this. Some people say it has this Band-Aid hospital-like smell. I love challenging fragrances, as you can see. Leathery, woody. Uh, there's also a uh, ingredient called golden wood in here. Um, and that's another strange little uh, ingredient that is not in many other perfumes. So this does smell very unique. Apparently, and I've never smelled it, but apparently it's supposed to smell like uh, Killian's Dark Lord from 2018. Interestingly enough, this came first. Killian copied it. Uh, and then I think Amouage put theirs out in 2018 as well. So yeah, this was kind of the trend center. 
So kudos to Gucci. I mean, they get pure props. The only, the only downside for them is they discontinued it. They should have kept it. I mean, because now there's so many people talking about it, like people like me on YouTube, and the prices have gone up because there's not a limited amount of bottles. But if you can find this for under 100, still I have no clue what the prices are. But if you can find this for under 100, buy. Buy, buy, buy. This is a, this is a buy. Um, oh, I can't wait to wear this again. And then we are going to go to one of my favorite um, Cipriol fragrances of all time. I did an entire, this is not a top 10 Cipriol. You can go check that out, but this is called Promise by Frederick Mall and Dominique Ropion. Just a beast of a perfume, an absolute beast of a perfume. Oh, apple, rosemary, pink pepper with Bulgarian rose, Turkish rose, absolute clove, Patchouli, Ambroxan, huge Ambroxan in this, huge throw. This this thing is a enormous fragrance. Labdanum, Cipriol, and Castorium. And um, if if Frederick Mall wants tips on how to use synthetics well after that uh, uncut gem fiasco, that boring uncut gem release, all he has to do is look to his past. Because and look how much I have left. I mean in a in a hundred mil bottle, this will last me a hundred years. Uh, all you need is one spray of this and you just are nuclear. I once accidentally ha got this on a jacket. I must have sprayed it on my neck, put the jacket on, and literally I could smell it on the jacket for months in that. All I had to do was come near the closet where this was at and I could, on my, where the jacket was and I could smell this. Um, but I love it sometimes, you know, some, maybe I'll wear this tomorrow. I got to wear something good tomorrow. Um, and next, maybe I'll wear this, actually. It's been a while since I've worn this. 2017, also discontinued, Tom Ford. Uh, I think this is better than Narciso Rodriguez for him, EDT. I like this more, and I'll tell you why in a second. But this is Anthracite, Tom Ford, Noir Anthracite. Um... The best from the line, in my opinion. The absolute best from the line. Tom Ford. Um, thank God I have this bottle. This is discontinued and getting impossible to find. But, oh, I love this stuff. You talk about Petrichor, and you talk about... It is very similar to um, Narciso Rodriguez for him, but where Narciso Rodriguez for him, EDT, goes much more into musks, this dries much more into patchouli. The patchouli is extremely evident, along with Makassar wood and uh, Ceylonese sandalwood, which is, um, for modern sandalwood, you know, you will see the higher quality uh, sandalwoods being used uh, in brands. They will specify certain sandalwoods. Like I noticed Ceylonese sandalwood is what uh, is in Balenciaga Por Homme because I have a tester bottle. And it literally says it on the back. Uh, and so now that they can't use Mysore, the uh, Ceylonese sandalwood is one of the better ones. Uh, and to my nose. And here it's absolutely beautiful. I love this fragrance. It's If you love 80s fragrances like I do, if you love vintage fragrances like I do, this is a fantastic modern take with a vintage twist. Okay, It's a, it's a fingerprint magnet, but... I love the bottle. I'm so glad I have 100 mils of this stuff. Uh, all the good Tom Fords are just getting the axe. Tobacco Oud got the axe. I mean, it's a sad day. Uh, and then we've got a green Amouage, one of my favorite green scents of all time, but it's so hard to wear because it's so big. It's Amouage Beach Hut Man. You talk about these two are two of the biggest perfumes in my collection, Promise and Beach Hut Man. Beach Hut is just I mean, you wouldn't think a green fragrance would last this long, but this thing is absolutely nuclear. Um, mint with orange blossom, galbanum, vetiver, moss, ivy, patchouli, myrrh, and dried woods. You know, as far as like vintage green fragrances go, I'd have to go with number 19. But as far as modern green fragrances go, this is my modern green perfume. It's so good, but it is 
It is so big. Um, and I will wear this in the summer. I don't care, but I will just project. I must project a 20 mile radius when I wear this in the summer. It's huge. Um, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And, uh, God bless Christopher Chong, man. I wish he came back to, uh, Amwage, but you know what? If he's going to Thameen or whatever that brand is, I will check out whatever he's releasing. Uh, and then we've got this beautiful little gem from the house of Javoy, uh, Javoy Paris, one of, one of my favorite, um, under the radar niche houses that no one talks about. They've got some amazing stuff in this is one such fragrance. This is from Vanina uh, Muracchiole. Sorry if I butchered your name there, Vanina Muracchioli. Uh, this is Incident Diplomatique. I absolutely love this stuff. I also love Private Label, which I think they're kind of, you know, vetiver cousins, if you will. This uses two types of vetiver. Haitian vetiver and Java vetiver. And it opens up with this um, mandarin orange with spicy nutmeg and it dries to patchouli and sandalwood. Seems very simple, but it's so elegant and so uh, wearable. It's just, it's one of those, you know, sometimes you have perfumes where you put them on and you just feel like you're wearing something special. You know, it doesn't have to be the most expensive because this is definitely not the most expensive in my collection. Uh, doesn't have to be the loudest, doesn't have to be the most complex. You just feel like you're wearing something special when I wear my Javoy fragrances. I really do. I feel like I'm, I'm wearing well-made perfume. Perfume for perfume lovers, you know? Now, I think they've started to get away from that maybe with some of the new stuff, but some of these older Javoys, 2017, 2012, you know, um, they are amazing. They are absolutely amazing. Incident Diplomatique is a pure love for me. Oh, I can't wait to wear my Javois. I usually wear them in the colder weather because they are very thick. Um, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Very modern masculine. You know, if you like vintage masculine vetiver fragrances, this feels like a modern take on like, uh, you know, uh, Guerlain vetiver or something like that. But I love it. Very distinguished. And then... Uh, we've got another, speaking of Guerlain, we've got a Guerlain that used to be called, uh, Louis, and it used to come in this packaging, and now they changed the name to Ouillé Pourpri, uh, and they tripled the price, of course they did, uh, so this is what the bottle used to look like, and this is probably one of Delphine Jelk's best works, I think, uh, this is this Benzoin, Carnation, Vanilla, and Leather. And it is um, very Guerlain. It has that Guerlainade in the base. It has this leathery Guerlainade in the base, but it has this spicy Carnation. And what they did with the new liquid, because the new bottles are like re the refillable bottles or whatever, so you can see through to the liquid, they colored it dark pink, this spicy pink Carnation color. And it is a perfect color for the, for the fragrance. Uh, you can't see the fragrance in here, but um, that dark pink is a perfect color because the spicy carnation and maybe a little bit of clove. And, you know, carnation and clove will kind of uh, sometimes feel like you're smelling the same ingredient when you smell carnation versus when you smell clove. Um, so, yes, if you can find, I got this for 40 bucks. As soon as I heard it was discontinued, I bought a bottle. Um, and then they re-brought it out for like 250 or 300 or whatever ungodly amount Guerlain is charging for it. Um, at 40 bucks, it's a steal. At 300, it's a pass. Okay, next, speaking of uh, high-priced perfumes that are not worth it, I, I like the fragrance, but uh, it is discontinued, and it's from the house of Killian's. And it's called Straight to Heaven. Oh, my little key fell out. My little key fell out. How could that happen? Come on, key. This is what I paid the $500 for or whatever. Ridiculous. I should have got the refill. Um, I mean, the box is kind of cool, but I just throw it. I just throw it around, put stuff on top of it. It gets all scratched up. And, um, you know, I guess the coolest thing is you can actually lock the box. Ooh. That's worth $500. Uh, 
uh, when it works. Um, oh. Let's see. Yeah. Huh? Protect my perfume from the goblins. Now let's see if I can get it back open again. Okay, so um, Straight to Heaven Extreme is basically Straight to Heaven Extreme, although it doesn't seem as extreme so as it could be, but it is very good. I do enjoy wearing it. Is it worth $500 for 50 ml? Hell no. Is it worth $150 for 50 ml? Yes, although uh, I will say this. I discovered this a year or two ago. It's called Jeroboam Ligno. And this is uh, 100 bucks for 30 mils or something. So if you can't find Straight to Heaven Extreme because it's discontinued and people want like $1,000 for it now, just buy this, okay? That's my recommendation to you. But um, Straight to Heaven Extreme smells a little... Excuse me, a little bit more expensive than than this. Here, the patchouli is a little bit more amped up. Here, the rum notes, um, the rum absolute, the the liqueur note is a little bit more amped up. Um, I don't think there's a liqueur note listed in Ligno, but it feels like there is. It feels like there's a there's a liqueur note. But if you if you prefer patchouli, if you like a lot of patchouli, you may like this better. Anyways. Um, but uh, yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. I like Straight to Heaven Extreme. I just think it's so terribly overpriced. Killian and their pricing uh, model, you know, charging you double for this box is criminal. But uh, whatever. It is what it is. It, it, it was a live and, and learn lesson for me. Um, and then, finally, the final fragrance on our 2017 list and it's a Creed, and it's my second bottle of this. I actually had a 100 mil bottle. I used the entire thing. Okay, it shows how much I love this fragrance. And this fragrance got absolutely shit on when it came out. I mean, everyone and their mom was making fun of this fragrance in Fragcom when it came out in 2017 because it had the Aventus, um, like, design, okay? But in red, so it looked like the Aventus bottle with red, and, and people lost their minds when they saw it, and then they smelled it, and they went, oh, that sucks, and just moved on, and just shit all over it, but honestly, it's a good fragrance. Um, I really like it. I hate the cologne version of it, but the original from 2017, I really enjoy wearing. Uh, I think it's got some, you know, it's like a modern fougere. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, it's like a modern take on a fougere to me, although it does have different elements of different uh, colognes from the past. Someone in the comments recently said it reminds them of like a bay rum, like a like a bay rum cologne of old. And I could see where they're coming from. Many people compare this to Old Spice, but obviously this is better than Old Spice. Uh, this is Creed's Viking, and uh, Creed's Viking is. Uh, so you can see I've decanted this little bad boy. Um, I did not use all of this yet. I have this in a decanter somewhere. And um, Creed's Viking is this amazing pink pepper. It, it starts off very peppery. And there's almost this ambergris-like oceanic vibe that kind of flows through the fragrance. But it dries. There's a beautiful rose that comes through as well in the heart. Peppery rose. But it dries down to this lovely vintage like Creed sandalwood, you know, like you used to get in the old Creed bottles. And lovely lavender, provincial lavender absolute, vetiver, and some patchouli. I just think it's so masculine, so invigorating. There's this uh, uplifting quality when I wear it, you know. And I happen to get uh, a flacon of the original. So my original bottle, I think, was a 17 uh, I think it was a 2017. That was a, that was when it originally came out. 17 or 18, I can't remember, but early on it was an early bottle. And then when I went to buy this a few years ago, uh, I all I was seeing was the newer stuff, and I was worried because Creed is terrible with reformulations. And finally, I found this 500 mil, and I had to pounce. It's a 2017 batch. 
right there. You can see 17U01. So if you're going to buy Viking, um, I would urge you to try to find a bottle from 17 or 18. Uh, 17 if preferable. You know, I don't know what they've done with it since then. I haven't smelled any of the new stuff, but I love, love this scent, as you can see by the amount of juice that I got. And I love reapplying throughout the day. It's just that kind of spicy freshness, just beautiful in the summer. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know what your favorite 2017 scents are. Uh, and a little under the weather today, so apologize for being a little off script. But um, yes, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know what some of your favorites are from, uh, from my collection from 2017. So probably no video tonight, but um, I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks to everyone for the support, for watching, commenting, liking, right at an hour. Uh, so appreciate it, everyone. Cheers, guys. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.